Ya. Um, let's see. Frank. Hello. MC, can you hear me? Frank, can you give me a wave if you can hear me? Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, MC. Hi, Kafri. All right. Hello, Lumo. Hi, Harriet. Okay, thank you guys for joining. I'm trying to send uh, Frank a link so he can join. Anyway, we apologize for the inconsistency in the network. Okay. It's been over 45 minutes. Sincerely apologize. Okay, sure. No more, I see you. Okay. Okay. So, happy International Women's Day to all of you. All of you. Especially the females who are joining. Yeah. Okay, Frank. Yes, Nam. Welcome. Thank you. I mean, it's been, it's been a more hell of a 45 minutes. It's been crazy. Yeah. You know? All right, but I can hear you now. Yeah, so let's zoom straight into the question I asked you earlier. Yes, I was, uh, I was saying that. Let's take positions and then positions or mm -hmm. politics comes along with challenges. So how do you look at this in the light of this year's International Women's mm -hmm. Day in choosing to challenge? So you chose to be a politician and what are some of the yeah. challenges you face along the line? Well, I was saying initially, in my initial contributions, I mentioned that one of the challenges of uh, being a woman and wanting to rent time to politics is the fact that usually people don't really see you as someone who is strong or bold enough to invent time to that, that field. You get it? People feel that okay, it's men that, are, that have dominated this uh, venture, if I should call it. I mean, it's just an anomaly. We have a lot of men dominating. So when you're a woman and you're coming in, you have to be. Like I mentioned, shameless. You have to be ruthless. You have to make sure that Charlie, you don't care about anybody's opinion. You have to be a little extra to show that you are also capable. But I feel it's a bit unfair because men don't have to really, they don't have to show anything or do anything extra. They just have to show up, be themselves, and say, like, "Okay, I want to be president." And then they work as they work hard for it. But women have to work twice as hard. You understand? And one of the challenges I faced. When I was running for a position with the fact that a lot of people would, would approach you, okay, we see you're a young girl, you want to occupy like a political position. Okay, you need help. But for us to help you, you need to bend, you need to do this, you need to do that. Okay. I mean, I have friends who run for positions who were sexually exploited just because it, they, they needed help, they needed that push. And women face this challenge every single day, you know. Yes, because you want to occupy a different position, you want to be, you want to be yourself. Come again. So, I, saw, I, I want to chip in this question very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, you made mention of the fact that when you were contesting for positions, there were friends of yours who were also contesting for other different positions. And they were exploited yeah. sexually along the line. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. uh, it has often been challenge women yourself you are your biggest impediment in the sense that when a female is contesting for a position or a female is doing something the first person to pull down mm -hmm. that particular female is her fellow female so i want to know your view about that particular thing because you are women all of us we are aware mm -hmm. that you have challenges but then generally the perception is that don't support yourselves how true is that and how do you relate to that yeah. That's not true at all. I think for myself, I mean, when I was running for the position, have females coming. Well, you won't have everybody liking you. A handful of people would actually um, say things about you or say bad things about you. Some sometimes it's not even about you running for the position. It's just it's just them not really females. Not like we don't support women. Women do all times, and I had a lot of people helping me.
supporting me when I was running for this position. You understand? So the whole mindset, I, I feel it's something people just say, just to, just to downplay our importance, just to make us feel like, okay, we are fighting within us, so we don't deserve support. It's not true. We're all the time, all the single time. Yeah, I'm sorry. People ask the question that if a male is to contest for Woko, it is possible that they will win. How do you think this is? Do you think it's possible? <laughs> that is not true. Women's it's not true. It's sure? not true at all. But the reason why the women's commission. Like the West, you don't need actually support yourself. That is why, I mean, even in Kenya University, there's been a president of a female biting somebody, but then the issue of them winning is a different ball game. Usually, when people are contesting for positions for a president and a vice, we have mm -hmm. contesting because they feel that even if you bring in the female, the female themselves will campaign against them. So, yeah, so how do you relate that to what you are saying? Because people, it's a perception out there and it seems to become fact. So, how do you bank it mm -hmm. and give us the facts to debunk that particular perception yes. that females are not their biggest you see, enemy? A man. Mm -hmm. A man, a man, a man can't be women's commissioner. Even if a man runs for the position of women's commissioner, I don't think they would. Even if they should win, I don't think they would, would excel at it as a female running in the next in the position. Because you look at it, level and you feel okay. It's just a position. It's easy. You should be able to oh, what your other fellow woman is facing. You can, when they come to you and then they express how as my friends, you can help. You can relate because you know the emotional trauma that was it. Men, some men will just, oh, it's you anyway. A man will just tap your butt or something. Any. That's what I'm saying. Men may win that position as women's commission and it sounds really odd but for them to excel at it i'm assuring you that they wouldn't and also so, i'm telling you that women in their own enemies and all that i feel and i still hold on to the fact that women if a woman should say she's going to run for president even on campus the first people that you hear commenting are the men it's not women it is these men who keep saying that and um, oh, I don't feel a woman should and uh, lead me. I don't need a woman to lead me and all that. It, it's not necessary. And also, I don't. Re I feel this conversation. We should be more progressive instead of con uh, you know, concentrating who that. when when they run for this position or who will do this or who will do that. It's international women, and like you said, we are supposed to look forward and then encourage more girls to take up positions. This whole debate about men and women, I don't think it would be able to help us achieve what we want to achieve. You understand? Yeah. So, we've been able to establish the fact that uh, women are not your biggest enemies. It's just misconception. So, let's zoom straight into the issues. You've been a women's commissioner before. You've been in the thick of affairs before. What are the challenges you face as a women's commissioner? You as a person mm -hmm. and then the office you held mm -hmm. or the people you led. What are the challenges you mm -hmm. face as a person and then the women in USD? What are some of the challenges you believe they face and they are still facing? Okay. Personally, the, I don't think I faced a lot of challenges. You know, the challenges I faced were related to me trying to get sponsorship for the food bank. But personally, as the women's commissioner, I don't think I faced any challenge. I knew what I wanted. And so I went straight into it. I worked hard for what it is that I wanted to achieve. So, and I'm the kind of person who would always plan ahead. So if I know I want to do food bank, I'm planning months before it's even launched. So any challenge I faced was because it was hard trying to get the people I needed on board. You, see, you understand? But some of the challenges I feel um, students face on campus, that's the females, is the fact that um, I was really say it's i won't generalize and say everybody you understand i won't generalize when i was a commissioner the few that i was in contact with 
And then the few that I actually interacted with, I realized that those who were from poor backgrounds had a lot of issues trying to make sure that they sail through their academic life without any challenge, you understand? And then there was the issue of um, sexual harassment, you know, and it was always faced by most of these girls, you understand, by their classmates, by people they, ch- they attend church with. And these were, these are things that are still happening, you understand? And we always call them subtle, we feel okay. And, and, yet, and yesterday it's nothing, it's normal, but it's not. Do you, do you get the point I'm trying to make? So in regards to the sexual harassment that I was talking about, we have um, buses on campus that convey students from vantage points to their classrooms or from their classrooms to their rooms or their hall, you understand? And then in, that was even before COVID, these buses would be choked up. And then almost all the time you hear girls complaining that whilst on the bus, a guy was trying so much to touch my butt. A guy did this, a guy touched me now appropriately. And it happens all the time. You say, they're like, oh, it's normal. You know, men don't own women's bodies. So you, you, you don't have any rights to even hit someone's butt or touch it or even touch them inappropriately. And these issues happen all the time. When you go to the Dean of Students office and you look at the people who have actually complained about sexual immorality, sexual harassment and all those kind of things, you'll be amazed. They come from friends, people you consider colleagues, people you consider, oh, this person I attend church with, this is my spiritual papa. You understand? And it happens all the time. These are challenges that are happening, but we don't have a lot of girls coming out to talk about it because they feel if I should report this person, this person is my friend and the school is going to eradicate this person. And I feel it doesn't really help. It makes this um, bad practice happen more and more. It doesn't curb it because we we choose to protect the perpetrators more than ourselves. Do you get it? So basically, these are just a couple of the challenges I, I see girls facing. And like I mentioned earlier, personally, as a women's commissioner, I didn't really have a lot of challenges because I had always prepared ahead. Yeah. So, um listening carefully to what you are saying i think i can infer from what you have said so far that the main issue that has to do with challenges of women is an issue of misunderstanding of women i believe based on what you have said so far you see as you said earlier people can be in a bus a male can decide to touch a female without a female's consent and something is is virtually nothing i mean after all what's wrong with me just touching you i haven't done anything to you you we should have that conversation we feel that Oh, it's it's normal. It's normal if a guy touches your butt. It's normal if your co-worker just hits your butt. It's normal if your co-worker just tries to pass this round around your breast. Having women conversation, we make we must make sure that we include men in these conversations, you understand? Those days that we people used to do things and go away with them and say, Well, men will always be men, Charlie. It's it's not it's long gone. People will be held accountable for whatever they do. Mm-hmm. the progressive part hello some old held concepts about how men and women relate so there is nothing wrong with it there is nothing wrong with that but then i believe based on what you have said so far we should progress in our view about women the ch- and the place in the sense that they shouldn't necessarily always be quiet about things known, they should have a voice. So, if I can infer from what you are saying, I believe it should be a progressive thing. So, after we've been able to dive in the challenge, we also progress in our conversation. What do you think? Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I, like I said, it should be a conversation. We always concentrate on women that this woman is going through. What are, what are the challenges female students on campus are going through? That and we feel we should talk about but we don't include the men most of the time we have these conversations and you realize that 80 percent of the challenges women are facing they'll tell you that it has to do with the fact that this friend this male friend or this blah 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 is making me experience you understand i i i'm holding on to the fact that if you want to have women's conversation we should not have it in isolation we should have it um um Sorry, hold on. I'm sorry about that. So we should, when we're having this conversation, no we should include everybody. 
we should include everybody in this conversation. Right. I'm sorry, please. So the <laughs> ask the question of, again. If I can. A bit distracted. Yeah. Hello? So men went to the issue of women. And I think vice versa also applies. When men to have our problems, we'd also invite the ladies so that they come on board have been that particular But we need a progressive community or a progressive environment, by the way. So it shouldn't necessarily be about women alone. Vice versa shouldn't also be about men alone. So men should be concerned about issues of women. And women should also as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we yeah, have spoken about the challenge. Yes, I, I made mention of the fact that you see, we are talking about progressiveness. So I made mention of the fact that you said mm -hmm. when we are having women conversation, it shouldn't be only about women, but then we should bring men into it so that when they hear the problems women are facing, one, they will appreciate it. And they will identify with it and to go along one to help them in how they relate to females. And after which um, okay, I want us sure. to see I agree with you. some of the things you believe we can do for women because women are going through a lot. So after we've been able to diagnose some of the challenges, what are some of the things you think we can do as a society, as a university, as a community <laughs> to help project the image, the identity, personality of the female? Yeah, I think we should we should listen more to women. You know, when women speak, we shouldn't see them as emotional beings who are only being emotional about the things they are talking about. They talk about things because they care about them. We care about things. That's how we want to talk about them. And one thing society should normalize is listening to us. You understand? When you make a point, I remember a friend um, sharing an experience where her car just touched her inappropriately. When she complained, she was told that, oh, why are you being so feminine about it. Why are you being a woman? Why have you been why are you being a woman about this? I mean, he, he only touched you. He did, it's not like he he had sex with you. He raped you. You understand? And it's not normal. You understand? We should support women who want to achieve, I mean, who want to pursue further education, who want to go higher, who want to get things for themselves or achieve things for themselves. And um, one challenge personally I face is the fact that when I want to dream and when I dream and I'm having conversations with individuals about what I want to achieve as, as a person, and the, the first question they ask is, how old are you? When do you intend to turn down? Why do you want to achieve so much? In the end, you're going to get married and it wouldn't matter. <laughs> it, it makes absolutely no sense. It matters, you understand? Because when I gain um, prominence and I'm up there, not only does it affect me as a person, it affects my marriage, it affects my friends, it affects my society, it affects my children. So the higher I go, the better my society also gets. So we should normalize um, women wanting to achieve higher status. We should normalize women voicing out their opinions. And we shouldn't think of it. I think talking about things from an emotional perspective, you get it. And we shouldn't expect so much from... I mean, we shouldn't expect women to fight, fight harder or work twice as much as men just to achieve the things they want to achieve. Things that you we should look at and talk about and have conversations about. Yeah, fine. Okay. So, uh, I've been trying to draw some things down here, and it's quite interesting. We've had a very, very nice conversation so far. You see, you spoke about the fact that, one, there is misunderstanding about the problem of female. And then you spoke about the fact that there should be more of listening. You see, we're in a generation where people don't even have time to listen. And women, clearly, you are going through a lot. So we should listen to you. And make mention of the fact that we should have conversations. So when you speak, we should listen. And then when we also speak, you guys are willing to listen. And the fact that we should encourage our females to aspire for higher heights. I was yeah. discussing this with 
friend of mine some time ago that any society that does not prioritize the interest and the welfare of females is bound to um, um, not succeed because it seems children spend a greater portion of their time with females, with their mothers. Yeah. The first nine the months of every life is spent in the womb of the mother, after which virtually you spend so many years, about two or three years, being breastfed by your mother. So you hear a lot of things from your mom. So it goes a long way to prove that if you're able to um, 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 raise our females very well, give them self-confidence, make them aspire for higher heights, they will also infuse it into the children we are having. So I've had people who said some time ago that Africa, we are struggling because we haven't actually prioritized the interest and the welfare of females. What do you have to say about this session? I mean, every, every nation, sorry, every nation that invests in women is actually investing in, in its um, economic growth as well. Because, I mean, um, there was a research that came in here said, Ghana has the highest number of women. I mean, being entrepreneurs, the country that has the highest number of women or highest percentage of women being entrepreneurs is actually Ghana. And just imagine the number. And I'll, I don't have my facts right to say that, okay, maybe this number of the 50% are not educated. But just imagine the economic impact this will make if this will have on Ghana's economy if we have more and more women. I mean, educated, you understand, have a decent level of education and be able to understand how um, economics work, how the financial market works, you understand. It would really, really go a long way of making sure that we grow as a nation, you get it. And it's, it's sad that right after first degree, um, we have a lot, a few, we have fewer women pursuing further because then they have gotten married, they have had children, and it's always hard and um, finding time to pursue further. But coming back to the question you asked, I feel that when more women are educated, not only will we grow as a nation, I mean, we'll have women, sorry about that, we'll have women, I mean, pushing the economy of Ghana and making sure that Ghana actually um, goes higher. Sorry, make sure that Ghana actually grows and then our economic I mean, situation will be way, way better. Okay, so um, it's now. Today is 110 years of celebrating World Women's Day. It started from 1911, yeah. today is 2021. My question is have we done enough so far? And what do you think we can do going forward? Get the female to the going level forward. and the status. It ought to be mm -hmm. from I mean 110 years ago as compared to now women were not able to do quite a number of things but we, we see that changing we have a lot of women in science technology engineering and mathematics and I feel that we have women challenging the status quo you know, look at the new World Trade Organization director Ngozi I mean she's 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 someone we can actually look up to. She's the first African woman, and I mean the first woman to actually achieve that. Piece. We have Kamala Harris from the US being the first female vice president. We have Jacinda Ardern being the first prime minister of, um, of New Zealand. You understand? We have um, Sana Marin being the first prime minister of Finland, and it's amazing to see women achieving this. I mean, if it took 110 years for us to get to this level. It doesn't mean we should just stop and relax and feel okay, we have a handful of women occupying higher positions, so we can relax. This actually is an example to me and to people of uh, my age and my generation to see that, okay, if we have a few women like this achieving higher heights, I can look up to them and say that I can be that. I have a seat at the table, I can achieve. I can dream and be whatever I want to be, regardless of my background. So you might downplay the fact that we women have not achieved much since 110 years, but I feel we've come a very long way and there's more to come. We have a lot of the Michelle Obama's coming. We have the, a lot of the Sana Marins and then the Jacinda Ardern and then the Ngozis coming up. And we, we will shock the world, you know. Our generation is going to transform the world and I believe I'm that part of I'm, I'm part of that generation 
So we have come a long way and we are still going and then we will still achieve more. Yes. Yeah. Wow, wow. So listening to you, I believe at this point we should see the glass as half full, not half empty. In the sense that we've been able to make some progress so far. And there is definitely going to be light at the end. Of we've the not made so some up, progress. We've made progress. And we are still making progress. Yeah. Yes, we have. We have. So um, yeah. we looked at challenge. We've looked at the, me choosing to be challenged. We've looked at the female, the progress. Now let's look at the sustainability. How do we sustain it? So this will be linked to your final words possibly. So how do we sustain the progress we have made so far? And how do you see the future from here? Mm -hmm. And possibly you are like um the future is bright. Females, this is the end. And all the the, 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 the the future is very bright. We have so many great women doing amazing things you understand you come to pay university and then we have like over 50 percent or almost i think 50 percent of the student population being females and look at what we will be able to achieve in the next 10 years look at these nine more females who are pursuing degrees in engineering and the social sciences and then in other um, fields as well so in the next 10 years you should, you should see a generation of women taking up space fighting for equality and then challenging the status quo to make sure that the occupied positions that we used to think were made understand. We we have I mean we 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 have the potential that feels and it's going to take women to change the world. International women's day like I, I I'm telling you we are celebrating women's achievements and then recognizing their struggles as well and then also appreciating how far they've come including myself and there's more to come in the next thing is like i said earlier we are going to change the world so in my final words that i'm giving to those who are watching us and those who are going to be seeing this and i'm mentioning that or i'm saying that we are smart enough we are good enough we deserve a seat at the, at the table and we are going to change the world. And we are going to challenge anything that stands in our way. That makes us feel like we are not enough. We are not good enough. We are not capable of achieving what we want to achieve. We are going to choose to challenge the status quo. Wow. Wow. This is so, so heartwarming. I've always said this, that seeing females succeed is a clear attestation of the fact that impossible is nothing but if you look at the challenges that faces the female on a daily, daily basis biologically psychologically culturally but then if you see them being able to answer all these challenges it's a clear attestation so whenever i see a female succeed i see impossible is nothing written on her face i mean in KUSD, we have gotten our first vice chancellor being a female uh, first female vice chancellor by the way professor rita dixon we have a professor in this school yeah. a professor in pharmacological studies who actually won an award professor Corbella Mante Presla. I mean a lot of them who are doing brilliantly well. So the success of the female is an attestation of the fact that the world is full of possibilities. And as such impossible is just a figment of people's imagination. And that impossible is actually nothing. So Esinam, thank you very much for your time. I have I have thank to admit, you I've enjoyed every single second I've spent with you. Thank you too. It was an yeah, so um, I'm not being here. Yes, yeah, I think Jencha, I don't know, but then when you end the video, make sure you save it for us because people must hear these kind <laughs> words you shared with us, these heartwarming words you have shared with us, and we also share it on all our social media handles. So, thank you, God okay. bless you, and a happy 110th Women's Day. Okay, thank you too. So, all the best in all yeah. your endeavors. Thank you, you too. Okay. All right. All right.